Welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkin Wiersma, also known as ETA. So yes, today another Blooms Bots and Such, which is basically an update on different things. Um, yeah, I'm going to walk around and we'll, we'll see what we come across. There are, are quite a few things happening over here. Well, first of all, this corner, maybe you m remember it, but I always had my Tolumnias over here. And I did grow them in a terracotta pot with some pumice, and they did okay. I did have uh, them blooming, etc. But I must admit, uh, the watering was a little bit of a, a pain for me. So I uh, decided to change it. And first of all, I did change the location, as you can see. I did hang this uh, rack over here, and I did put them in these net pots and uh, with some extra holes in here and a little bit of semi-hydroponic uh, way of growing. So what I do, they have a little bit of water, not a, a, a large reservoir as usual with the other orchids, but just a little bit of water in a net pot, so lots of air. But I did have them uh, dehydrated. I saw a wrinkling on the leaves, so they needed a little bit more water plus a better location. So from uh, those uh, observations, uh, this idea came and they are now hanging very closely to the roof where it's warmer and they do get a little bit more light. And these spikes were already there, so that's why they, they almost touching the roof. But anyhow, I can already see that the leaves are starting to green up, especially on this one. This one was so dry, poor thing. <laughs> so. Um, I have a uh, water gauge in here. Maybe I want to transition completely to water, uh, semi-hydroponic, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not completely sure. So this is a sort of uh, special uh, <laughs> midway and I will see how they will do. But these tiny ones like this one, I have it for several years and it's, it really is not growing. It's surviving, it makes new growth but it doesn't get really bigger and that is uh, i believe because i i did 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 get didn't give them enough water i believe i'm not completely sure but i can already see like i said that the leaves are really nice plumping up and we have beautiful new growth new roots so this is a nice time to do a repot on them but yeah this is a little bit you can see this one is still uh, fairly hydrated here dehydrated i should say so that's, that's too much, that's not good. So yes, I, uh, I will not keep them completely in water yet. We will see what they do. But uh, first of all, they will now have uh, water for several days instead of um, yeah, maybe probably one day. I did water them twice a week, but it wasn't enough. So uh, they needed a change. And now they have their beautiful own spot over here. And this is how it looks from the other side. So we have some room if I uh, would have uh, a few more. I'm not sure. I just want to check and see how this goes. But uh, I also are interested, uh, still interested in uh, Bratonias. And I think they need a sort of similar care. I'm not completely sure. I didn't do my research yet. But I thought, well, maybe a few Bratonias. Who knows? And I also could have some summer fells on this side of the wreck. The, um, that would work, but they want to grow through the light, through the light. So I think we will get them the strange shapes on, on these fails. So, and I have still have enough room on the wall. So I'm not going to do that. But we have some options for the summer bloomers, if I wanted to. But anyhow, that's a little update on my Tolumnias. It's a nice little project going on over here. Then we have this one in bloom again. Look at this beauty, five blooms this time. This is my Alelia Pepperada variety Rubra. Absolutely beautiful, such a beautiful purple color. We have a little bit of thrip damage over here, sadly. I did spray them yesterday, so it should be fine now. But if you are not, if you are not too close, you can see, uh, you don't see it as much and it looks still beautiful. But yes, this is the third uh, Lelia Pepperada variety that I have in bloom. So if you missed it, yeah, I uh, had some in my uh, bloom updates. But this just uh, opened up a few days ago. And behind it is a first time bloomer. This is my, uh, uh, I believe it's final blue. This was a gift from a subscriber. I don't remember uh, the urine. Uh, yeah, I think it's Dana, Dan uh, Danny, I believe. 
Hey, Danny. But uh, thank you so much. And look at this. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just open up the blooms. This, uh, this is the plant. Kalea. Yeah, final blue baby, I believe it says on the tag. So that is that. And then I'm going to show you this setup. You see a tray with a basket in there. We're going to talk about it. And we have another one over here. I have another one over here. This is my yellow bird. And the previous one was uh, Ivana Gara, Jack Foley at something, Apple Blossom, <laughs> the pink one. But here we have another one. And you can see beautiful roots there. New root tips over there. Yes, there's a reason for this, you guys. <laughs> I have another one over here. It's a dendrobium. Sadly, a lot of weeds. I need to weed it, but also a fairly open setup. And I also do that on my brushes over there. Here and one there. And I have a beautiful one over here. This is also an, also a dendrobium. But look at the roots. So yes, why am I doing this? Well, I did talk about this previously, uh, briefly in previous videos. Oops, I'm bumping my hands. <laughs> um, my warmer growers, some of them, not all of them, do lose their roots in winter because the water in the reservoir get, gets too cold. In winter, I try to keep it around 80 degrees, but the water will be 16, 15, and sometimes even 14 which is just way too cold. And then they start losing the tips, the, the parts of the root that are uh, in the water. So I thought I need to, do with, uh, need to deal with that. And what I do with uh, quite a few of my orchids is I give them way more air. Uh, that's why I have this fairly open setup to get the air in plus the moisture. And air is not as cold as uh, the moisture. So hopefully this will work. Plus, these uh, roots uh, really enjoy the air. So that is why I start potting up a lot of my orchids in this type of setup. What I also do, this one is in a net pot, but is a um, pot and I'm making holes in there, as you can see. Also a test to see if they do better. So I have this room between the outer pot and the inner pot, so a lot of air in there. And hopefully it will help to keep those roots happy. And I have those same buckets on my nobilies over there, just to see how it goes. I always like to see, uh, yeah, to, to make my setup better and better if I can. If something is good, I mean, never change a golden a winning team, a golden team, however you want to call it. But not all of them were doing always that fine. But you can see, this is the other apple blossom, how many roots are already uh, really going for it. <laughs> and the Cattleyas, also some of them had to have the same type of setup. Plus you saw the holes in these pots on my Tolumnias. This is also what I do with my um, Brassavola types. Same story, and a lot of have them have this moss growing on top, which I keep uh, getting out on parts. They love the moss, but it's almost, if it, it creates a seal. So no air coming in and no air coming out, or gases, however you want to call it. It's both. <laughs> but anyhow, so I have def several holes now, just above the reservoir, to get that air in, air movement, so they can be exchanged. Uh, in between the gases that uh, the orchid uh, releases uh, via the roots, those can come out and air can come in. Oxygen, actually, basically what I'm talking about. But anyhow, <laughs> so just little projects. I like to do that. We have holes over here. This is a very open setup, mm, not really working. You can see it's already dry, even though it's making new roots. Don't think that is a, the best of ideas. It's too airy. But I have quite high uh, immunity here, so maybe it will be fine. But I think it's just a little bit too dry. Again, lots of room between the outer pot and the inner pot, as you can see. And again, with this one. And also with this one. So I did a lot of repotting behind the scenes <laughs> without the camera. But I um, guess just to see if it works or not. 
like I said, I really like uh, and uh, enjoy these types of changes for the best, of course. I hope you can see the holes there on the side of the inner pot. And also with this one and with this one. And who knows, who knows. And while we're here, this is a first time bloomer for me. Look at this. This is the Amethyst Gem, I believe. Let me grab the tag. So I do, yeah. This is Brasha Olelia Amethyst. And like I said, this is a first time bloomer. And this bloom is uh, quite a bit off. <laughs> it happens with the young plants if they bloom for the first time. So it probably should be fine because the second bloom opened up perfectly. Absolutely beautiful. So yes, they bloom for me. That's, that's not a problem. But I'm losing a little bit too much of the roots. And that's not what we want. So uh, there needed to be a little bit of change in a setup. And as, as, as you can see with this one, this is my yellow bird, like I said, I see so many, whoops, so many roots. And it looks beautiful. Of course, people are going to ask, how do you do it when you, how, how will you repot them with all those roots on the side of the pot? Good question. <laughs> uh, well, I try to not to repot them, <laughs> but I really have to. It is almost similar, I think, like uh, when I would grow them in a uh, terracotta pot. It's not ideally, f especially when, uh, when you need to repot, but I can cut this so I don't have to break it, which, which you should do with a terracotta pot, I believe. But you will break a lot of roots. I think this is easier. It may not look like it, but I can really easily cut the plastic. So I can cut it into pieces, take it into an, uh, a pot, because plastic doesn't uh, start rotting as well as my inorganic media, so it's it's easier than you might think. But uh, yeah, it, it's more ideal if you really can take them out of the pot and that's it. But yeah, this is for the best. And like I said to, uh, I think it was Robbie Robinson, she also asked me how I do repot them. Um, it's, it's several months back, maybe a year. And he said, and the other side of the story is that I at least have roots to work with. That's why I start this setup, to get those roots there. So yeah, this is a, uh, another problem, but I'd rather have this problem with a lot of roots than plants that don't have roots, if you know what I mean. So that's why, uh, why I keep using the net pots and just to see how they, uh, how they will do. So we have, here is one of the new ones we just saw in the unboxing video, or actually the update on Landsbergen, and it ha has some mealy box, I keep spraying it. And here's that Miltonia, opening up more of those beautiful blooms. But I did repot them already, and again, a beautiful setup. And this Cattleya as well. I think it's a beautiful setup. Let's go over to my uh, Miltonias, because these doing so well in this setup. I mean, this is the one I showed you a picture of. It's now opening up the blooms, also from Landsbergen. Look at that. This, this is my most favorite. I love that red color in there. But also a sunset, sunset cross, Metonia sunset, I believe. Anyhow, net pot. And look at this. Look at all these roots coming out. And this one, um, I hope you can see it over here. It was in a small net pot. I just put it in a bigger pot, put some pumice around it, some pebbles on top, and that was it. And look at that. It really loves it. We have roots everywhere. Absolutely beautiful. So this one was the biggest inspiration to doing this. It, it just took off. So uh, these are just repotted in there. So don't don't have much roots there. But yeah, this is already going over the edge because it's more growing more sideways. But anyhow, a lot of roots there. Roots going down into the reservoir, some other roots. This one not yet. This is my festival, it's just done blooming. So yeah, that is about the net pots. I thought I needed to do an update on this because it uh, can be a quite a huge impact on my uh, growing, a way of growing for the more warmer growers. Hibiki. Making a show and making cakeies. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And here is a Cymbidium. 
same story i'm trying the same setup even though these are more classed as terrestrial growers i still because of the setup with a lot of moisture i would like to try and see how those take a more open setup in this case like this smaller one you can see there the outer pot and the inner pot there's quite some room in between yeah just just seeing how they will uh, will take it <laughs> And while we're here, why not just do a quick update on the dendas? They are really going strongly and well. Look at this, beautiful roots. Still growing in a new setup. Doing wonderfully well. And uh, look at that beautiful strong spike over there. Loads of cake, yes, this one. Beautiful new roots. Area roots, more area roots. <laughs> That's okay, we have some roots in there. And also a new root here. This is the gift from Inza. Look at this beautiful piece of art, right? These, these roots. Working on this beautiful strong spike over here. Absolutely beautiful. And we have a smaller one over here. And down here these guys still working on the roots. Down in there. And my Ren and Theras, finally. New roots on the way. <laughs> oh, it's more than a year. It took more than a year to uh, let them create roots again. This is still an old root, but there, just above my finger, you see an old spike, but you also see a new root just coming out. Once again, finally, these two guys. So they love the setup, I can say now. <laughs> they absolutely love it. So, and they are so strong, really picking up again. Maybe a little bit on the dark side, color-wise, the green, I'm not completely sure. But they look m way healthier than before, so that, that's okay. Maybe, maybe they will skip blooming, I'm not sure. We shall see what they will do. And I got the sedum types. Oh, look at these new growths. This is the vendor, but look in, back in here. Very strong new growth on this one. Also on this one. And back in there more new growth and that one in the back has two new growths i hope you can see it let me put the camera over here <laughs> yeah there you can see them that's my uh flat fred clock the black one that one decided to make two new growths this year and those are uh, absolutely welcome <laughs> and again quite an open setup i did repot them just took them out of the pot and put them in a bigger pot I had uh, quite some older roots on these guys and there were new growths starting from the older roots. So I don't keep, I don't uh, take the old roots off if I don't have to. And a beautiful green, they are so healthy. And this year I believe they are even stronger than the years before. So, so, so far uh, we're doing uh, very fine with these guys. Absolutely beautiful. They get a lot of light in that corner. And as you can see, they're really growing towards the light. Big pockets. And yes, I have a video on them. I keep uh, watering them. Yeah, I don't let them dry up at all. Never ever. And they seem to like it. And this fell just opened up. Uh, I think this is our authentic pink. Just a commercial name. <laughs> I broke off a piece of the spike, sadly, while watering, but nonetheless, it's so beautiful. So there's over here, let's go inside of the orchid room, because we still have these beauties in bloom. And we have a few more over here. So here we go. Miltoniopsis. Absolutely beautiful. Princess Diana over here. A few more blooms here. And this is also quite a beauty. This is this one. That is over here. And this is also opened up fairly new. Look at the details. Breathless Brilliant. Not only up Breathless Brilliant. Sadly the the plant itself is not that strong and I had this one for years and I never do, did better than this so I'm not completely sure maybe maybe it's sick or so 
I'm not completely sure. Because this one, the huge one, is younger than the one we just saw, believe it or not. So yeah, this one is uh, doing so much better. It's just so much stronger. And this beautiful, almost lilac one. Beautiful. See, so yeah, I'm not completely sure. I think I, uh, if I see it for sale again, I'm going to try another one and see if it's just better. This one ca loses roots. It does bloom, but it's just hanging in there. And that's, that's all it does. So the rest, even though this is, I sprayed this, I probably had some water left, but you can see the bulb is so much stronger, so much better than this one. So yeah, I think this one is just not as strong. It has a beautiful spike, two, four, six, seven blooms for Miltoniopolis. That's quite nice. Mo normally I have four, five, sometimes six blooms, but this has uh, seven. So yeah, I'm not sure. And this one opened up also during the last couple of days. <laughs> beautiful. This is the Memoria Donald Yamada. Donald Yamada, yes. That's the big Milton Yops, the newest one, already also in a net pot with a nice tray. Just to see how that one will do. And then we have this one. This is the most favorite one, if you ask me. But look, just some new blooms, freshly opened up. Stunning, if you ask me. Stunning. <laughs> oh, what a details. What a details. Um, tag. Where's the tag? Here is the tag. I'm sorry. That is C. Absolutely beautiful. And sadly, we had, yeah, we, I have a few blooms here. That's my uh, Miltoniopsis uh, Rusliai Farcus Santina. I have two of them here and one. With the other uh, Miltonias, they had spider mites. Just sprayed them yesterday, so that's why we see some damaging on the bloom spikes, the leaves. Oh, I miss them. They can do so much damage if you don't spray them straight away. If you see the spider mites, and I always have them, but the plants have roots, so it, they will be fine. But it just, yeah, it doesn't look very nice, to say the least. Here are my Nellies. Those are the only one, only two that I didn't repot yet because I don't didn't see any root growth yet. So I did cut some blooms off to hopefully encourage that plant, that Nelly, to make a new growth. This one has a new growth, but there are no roots yet. This beautiful yellow one. And here, this is also a favorite of mine. It's disturbing, just open up. It's, it, there's something about it, the spike, the shape of the blooms. I hope it does, oops, I'm sorry. There's something, I love it, absolutely love it. Look at that, so beautiful. And then above this uh, Sturbeck, we have this purple one. Let's show it in my last update, but there are more blooms. And there, there is a hint of anise in this fragrance of this one, which is beautiful. I, I'm really smelling it now. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And for those who want a name, let's zoom in. Here is the name of this one. But it, yeah, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Very, very nice. And while we're here, the Jubal Orchid's doing fine. Big bushes again. So last year I did an update on them. I did a video about them. They weren't looking as good, but I think I found a better spot for them. The foliage is now way better than it ever was before. So no direct daylight or sunlight whatsoever. So I have them underneath those lights and that's it. I hardly fertilize them, just give them all water. And here and there, maybe once every two, maybe three months, just a teeny tiny bit of fertilizer, and that's it. And they seem to like it. They seem to like it. So that's it, it for you. No, that's not it. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you this. Whoops. Uh, as well, this is finally starting to grow. 
This is the Medendrophyllum magnum. Look at the new growth. One, two, three, and there is number four. I think we have four this time. So from three growing directions, we will now go over to four. That's beautiful. This just sits there for months. It has a, a pot full of roots. It likes to drink quite a lot. Even when nothing really is happening, it still drinks. But as soon as it starts to grow, it drinks even more. <laughs> But it can sit there for months and I was like, mm, I don't know, what are you doing? Are you, are you still here? Are you, do you still want to grow or what? And then suddenly it starts to grow and it really takes off. Funny how orchids are all different. Of course, if you have the same orchids, probably maybe want to behave similar, but uh, the, the different types of orchids, I love it. They have the all unique way of growing. And of course, even if you have the same orchid, they still are different. These nellies are not the same, of course, but they have a general care guide to them. But like the twinkles, everything likes something a little bit different. <laughs> These twinkles, this one is still quite yellow. But so far, my new growth, I should knock on wood, do not show the, the black spots yet, which I had before on new growth, even on new growth. So who knows, who knows? I have them a little bit closer to a LED light instead of sunlight, filtered sunlight. Hmm, maybe they do better. These are the ones that I did get from INSA. This is new growth, this new growth, and all oh, the names, the names. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it. So Inter, I hope they will do well. Oh, this is a challenge. But uh, we have new growths. And again, air holes, net pots, water, who knows? It might work, it might work. You never know, <laughs> if you don't try, of course. So this is a bit of an update, you guys, in between uh, all the other things that are going on. Uh, I hope you all do well. I'm just checking if I have more updates. Well, I have a bit of a sad update on my zygos. <sighs> it's just overall, I'm not completely happy. This this one does fairly well, but the spots. I know everyone everyone says that zygos and they they have these spots and they're coming, but still, there must be a way of growing them without these spots. I I'm I'm strong strongly believe that this is this is just not good. Who knows what they will do, who knows what they will do, but yeah, see, this one is really sick, don't want to touch it. it. did bloom well, this was the second spike, but you can see the leaves, I'm not happy with it. I will check them for spider mites, but I don't think they have them, I did spray them not that long ago. You can still see the bit of a shine there on that leaf, I think. Who knows, they may, might be back, maybe that's the problem, I'm not completely sure. But we will see. So yeah, I think this is for now for me, uh, the update. And um, as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>